get ready to perform even more evil deeds. This is our review of the bigger and badder expansion of Villamus. Villainous is a hand management take that style game, and this expansion features Lotso, Syndrome, and Madame Mim. And I always enjoy seeing the new pieces and the new artwork on the player boards. This is a solid expansion to Villainous featuring classic characters with unique objectives. I'll we'll tell you more about it after this quick how to play. This game can be used with the base game or any of the other expansions, or it can be a standalone game using the three featured villains. Players move their villains around their realm and perform different actions at each location. Players will play cards from their villain deck in order to achieve their objective, and also play cards from their opponent's fate deck in order to slow them down. The player that achieves their objective first wins. Lotso's objective is to have four heroes with a strength of zero and Buzz Lightyear in the Caterpillar room. Syndrome's objective is to defeat Omnidroid 10 and have no heroes in his realm. Madame Mim's objective is to defeat all of Merlin's transformations. We're big fans of the Villainous game in general, and one of the things that I love are all of the great artwork on all the cards and all the player boards, as well as the unique player pieces. I really love the production value that goes into all of the Villainous games. One thing I always like seeing when I'm at the store is the box art. Just the way they set it up with the sleeve or even just the color scheme and everything, it just, it looks really cool, especially with the silhouette of one of the villains. In this one, you've got Syndrome, which I think is the coolest one, but that's only because I've seen Incredibles a lot of times. The other ones, not so much, but I still think they're kind of cool. My favorite out of the three is Madame Mim, because I really like Sword in the Stone, but none of the villains in this box are bad. Well, they're bad, but they're <laughs> not like yeah. bad. All of the objectives are unique, like in all of the other villainous characters. However, they're all pretty evenly weighted. So even though you're all doing different things, you never feel like one person has an advantage because they have an easier objective. In Despicable Plots, I felt Gaston was so easy to win that whoever had Gaston is gonna win every time. Now, when you have unweighted characters like that and you're playing with all 20 of the characters that you can do in villainous, you can kind of play. You can play Gaston with Prince John and have two easy characters go up and face each other. But if you're only playing with the expansion and you have Gaston going against Lady Tremaine or the Horn King, then it's not an even match. Whereas this one I feel is a very even match. One thing I noticed is that when we were playing this game, we were really going to the fate deck a lot. So we were just playing a fate on each other. Whereas the other villains, I don't think we were doing it that much. We were too busy trying to just play our cards in our hand and, and get our objective. Whereas here, it was like very heavily dependent on playing fate deck or fate cards on your enemies. I'd have to look at all of the boards side by side, but yeah, I do feel that this one had a lot more of the fate option available in each of the locations in each of the realms. And some of the characters like Syndrome needs to battle some of the heroes in order to get some of his objective. And then Lotso needs his heroes to come out too. However, there are cards that allow Lotso to play heroes into his realm because Lotso needs the heroes and then he needs to bring their strength to zero as part of his objective. So they incorporated the use of the fate deck and they made that more prevalent in this game, which I appreciated. And a way to balance that too is um, Lotso and Madame Mim actually have on top of their realm an empty spot. So if a hero is played there, it's not really blocking any moves, unlike some of the other realms where you eliminate some uh, options if you were to move your villain there. Yeah, in Madame Mim's realm in the dueling round, that's where all of Merlin's transformations go. And her objective is she has to defeat Merlin's transformations. So when Merlin plays a transformation up here, she has to have the matching corresponding animal to then defeat this animal. Now, once it's displayed here, it can move to other locations and some of the cards will allow it to move to other locations. But it starts off without covering up any of her available actions in that particular location. And with Lotso, you have Buzz Lightyear starting in the Caterpillar room. And basically the objective is moving heroes there and vanquishing them or having Buzz Lightyear end there and, you know, vanquishing. I have my usual criticisms of this game, which it's that it's a lot of luck of the draw. You're always drawing cards, trying to play the right cards in order to achieve your objective. Some of these characters mitigate that a little bit better than other characters throughout the Villainous universe. In some of the games that we play, if the card that you need is at the bottom or some of the cards that you need aren't coming up your way, you can have a long game of just drawing cards or doing whatever, while other players seem to be achieving their objective a lot quicker than you are. As always, the scenes depicted in each location, on the fate cards, the different characters, or even in your own villain deck, the artwork is just great. It's really nostalgic to the movie and it just reminds you like, oh yeah, I remember that character. Or, oh, I remember that part. It just kind of makes you relive it a little bit. I think when we played it, Kenny actually put on like a different 
Disney music videos on the TV and we were just like, all right, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a big fan of the Villainous franchise, but you didn't really like the last expansion, the Despicable Plots one, because it felt a little underwhelmed because the characters weren't even, some of the mechanics were a little off, even some of the rules and the directions had misprints. I feel like they did a much better job on this one. They tried to clear up all the mistakes that they made on the last one, and this one did a much better job. The characters are fun, the mechanics are fun, everything is clear. We didn't have to try to go to the rule book and figure things out too much, so I I think that this was a much better job on the creator's part. Overall, I always enjoy the new pieces, the new artwork, and then I think the villains that they chose for this expansion was great. I'd probably give it an eight, which is a little bit higher than previously for other villainous games, but that's because I just think them improving on the take that or just adding more take that mechanics in this really, really did it for me. Overall, I'm going to keep my score at an 8, which is keeping in line with the rest of the villainous world that we've reviewed so far. I do think this is a better expansion than the last one, Despicable Plots. I like that the mechanics are more evenly weighted between the three villains. I like that there is more take that elements. And I just really like that I feel like it flowed a lot better than the last expansion. And that was our review of Villainous, Bigger and Badder. What'd you think? Are you ready to have lots of fun? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're enjoying our content, please like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to see our other villainous review, check out our description below. Until next time, I'm Lee. And I'm Kenny. I go party like a board gamer.